This is Shepard with the Jackson Hole Shooting Experience, and I received an email yesterday from a lady that uh, shot with us, and she's interested in purchasing a 1911 pistol that is very much like the one that she shot uh, in our multi-gun shooting experience. And I thought, hey, uh, th this response that I want to give deserves a little bit more attention than uh, uh, than just a quick email. So eh, why don't I, you know, I, I haven't shaved in a few days. I'm on vacation. Why don't I make a video? So I decided to do that. So here you go. Hopefully this will help you as well uh, if you're searching for a 1911. So the 1911 that this lady shot was a Springfield Armory 1911. It was a full sized. Uh, some 1911s are made in a, an altered size, the, the smaller officer model types uh, compared to the full sized. So the one that she shot was a full sized. Uh, the model number that Springfield Armory gave it was the A1. Now a challenge when you're looking for 1911 pistols is that there are so many options. There are a lot of different companies that make them. Some of them make material changes and some only make cosmetic changes. Uh, some have better triggers, some have better barrels, some have better frames. And so there's, there's a lot to take into account as you, as you contemplate which one you want. So then you turn to me and I say, I don't really know. Um, here's, here's how I made my decision. I decided I wanted to compete uh, with a 1911. So I went to a local friend, he was a high-end 1911 builder, a custom builder, Herb Hazen. And I said, Herb, what do I want? And I can't afford one of your nice $3,000 pistols. What, what can I do? He suggested, he, he's worked on a lot of different 1911s doing gunsmithing. And he said, right now, the best one out there uh, is the Springfield Armory. And he said, if you get that, we can then build it up to be the, the good gun for you. So I purchased the Springfield Armory uh, A1 and used it for some years in, in competition. Uh, my wife was using it at a class and there was evidently, I'm not gonna admit that it was my fault, but evidently uh, one of the hand loads I did was a squib. And so she had a, a catastrophic failure. And when she fired, uh, the one bullet goes down the barrel and hits the other bullet that was lodged in the barrel, that's a squib. And it caused the magazine to pop out, smoke coming all over the place. Fortunately, she wasn't hurt, but it cracked the uh, part of the barrel just a little bit, one of the little connectors on the barrel. So I took the gun back to Herb and said, uh, hey, uh, what do we need to do? And he said, you know, let's put a new barrel in. And so he said Ed Brown uh, would be a good barrel. That's the brand. So he put an Ed Brown barrel in. And then he did some tuning up of the trigger. And I'm not a gunsmith and I'm not very tech savvy in that way or engineering savvy, gunsmithing savvy. Uh, but he did some sort of polishing to make the trigger be more sensitive and smoother. And so that is the gun that we ended up with. Oh, and I put an aftermarket grip on it uh, that kind of had the little cutouts for the finger or little molded uh, cutouts for the finger. And I find it to be really comfortable. It has some stippling little bumps on it, uh, but it's made of a, a hard rubbery plastic material. Uh, so those are kind of the modifications done to my pistol years ago. So right now, I don't know that Springfield Armory offers that exact pistol. And if they do, I don't know that that's the exact one you want. Um, if you're not concerned so much about, you know, how much it costs, I actually would suggest a, an STI. They're just a great brand. Now, when I say this, those of you watching this who know guns are going to say, oh, you've got to have the, the but it's a Black Hawk or, or Nighthawk or everybody's going to have a favorite high-end custom 1911. And the truth is, probably all of them are pretty good. Um, you're, you're not going to really go wrong if you're spending more than 1500 or 2000 bucks on a 1911. You'll, you'll get something good. The things that you care about, if you're getting the traditional large frame, regular size uh, 1911, you care about the trigger. That's the biggest thing that it has a good trigger on it. Now, some companies have tried to make uh, good 1911s that are that are for the gentleman shooter that's only going to shoot once every couple years, and this person wants a higher end gun but doesn't want to have all the customizing done. And Kimber is a is a good name for this. So their guns are going to cost 20 or 30 percent more than other 1911 makers but they've already done the trigger work and, and so on and so forth. I've never met a competitor though that uses Kimber. It's 
it's not really a hardcore user's gun. I mean, they're going to be fine, but if you're planning to shoot a lot, I'd step up to a, a different brand than that. As I mentioned, I like STI, but lots of good brands out there. Um, and I'll, I'll actually put a link to some of them down in the, uh, the description of the video, um, just to give you an idea. But the search, it's not an easy thing to look for. So in this particular situation, I would say I don't suggest trying to replicate the uh, the exact gun that I have. It, it was okay, but it was a, a lower mid-end. Uh, there's no reason to go buy one of those and then put the Ed Brown barrel in because the existing barrel is going to be great. It's going to be just fine. Um, she mentioned that the grip felt just wonderful. It's made for her hand. That's how I feel about a lot of the CZ heavy frame uh, pistols. And for her, this grip was just perfect. My wife, Lynn, she says, uh, there's a different gun for every body. So for this gal's body, for her hand, this particular grip I had felt great. And I'll put a link to that down below. That is, if I can find it, I'll find one that's pretty similar uh, when I get back home from vacation. And uh, so that'll be included in the description. So my long story short suggestion would be to get a Range Master uh, version of the STI and get it in nine millimeter, just because it's more comfortable to shoot. It'll let you shoot more, which will make you be a better shooter. Um, that's what I would suggest. If you do want the full size 45 uh, ACP, that's great. They're, they're wonderful. I used it for many years and loved it. Um, then go for any uh, Ed Brown, Les Bear, uh, STI. Is it Nighthawk or Night Force? Something like that. I'll, I'll put a link as I mentioned, or uh, the name of it down below. Um, anything like that that's a, a couple grand, it's going to be a, a great gun. The shape, and this is a big thing, the reason that many of us love 1911s, is that the angle of the barrel and the frame, the angle of the grip is just feels good to people who like 1911s. It feels good. And that angle is going to be the same on any 1911 model uh, traditional shaped gun, which is what you're going to find on, on Gunbroker or Guns America or wherever you're searching. That's what you're going to find. And whatever you find is going to be comfortable. You get that aftermarket grip that feels good to you. Hogue is a, a, a popular brand, the Hogue grips, and that might be what I have on mine. As I mentioned, I'll put the correct answer down below. Uh, and then just put that grip on. If you have already spent two grand on the gun, it's going to have a good trigger. Uh, you're probably not going to have any have to have anything additional done. If you do, find a local gunsmith. And this lady is from uh, outside of the United States. She's in an even better country. She lives in Texas. So in Texas, there are going to be all kinds of great gunsmiths. Talk to a friend. Talk to somebody at the range, and they're they're going to mention, "Oh, you got to use Bob. Bob's the best ever, and he's just you know he's a master gunsmith. Great. Bob's going to do a very good job." Uh, just make sure you get a recommendation from an actual shooter, preferably a competitive shooter. Uh, they know more and they care more. Uh, they're paying for their own ammunition. They're paying for their own guns. Uh, they're going to care more than perhaps your neighbor down the street who was assigned a cop uh, uh, gun as part of his job as a cop. He was assigned a particular gun and, and he's not going to be the expert that the local person that actually competes is going to be. So I, I would talk to a IDPA, USPSA, three gun competitor, somebody like that and say, hey, who's a who's a good custom gunsmith that can do some work on my trigger? Um, so that's my overall advice on uh, selecting the pistol. And for all of you that have been out to shoot with us, uh, kind of included in our price is a lifetime of shooting emails to me. And, uh, and I'm not a phone talker kind of person, but shoot an email and just say, hey, I found these three on gun broker. What do you think of them? And I, I'm, again, I'm not a gun person. I'm a shooting person, but I'm not that much of a, a gunsmith uh, engineering kind of guy. But I've, I've made a lot of mistakes over the years. And hopefully I can use those mistakes and kind of take a look and say, oh, you know what? I did make this error. Don't, don't reinvent this wheel. I just take my advice and go for this one or that one or uh, can't keep looking or, or something like that. So hopefully these tips have helped you. You know who you are. I'm not going to divulge your name. And anyone else watching, hopefully these have helped you. And uh, please do be in touch. Shoot an email to me, so to speak. And uh, I'll be in touch.